Legend State version 1 was the fastest React State Manager. Now with version 3, they're breaking the mold again by adding local first sync. Let's have a look at it right now. All right, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the basics of Legend State, and then we're going to get into this local first sync stuff as we integrate it with React Query. It's really cool. All right, we're starting off with a very simple Next.js starter app. We're using Next.js because we need to support API routes because of the whole local first sync things. So we got to see how that works. The only other things to add on to this Next.js application is Shad CN so we can get a nice looking input and button control. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a test page called Basics, where we'll go over the basics of Legend State and how it works. Now we need to bring in Legend State so we can start playing with it. To do that over in the terminal, I'll bring in Legend State, but I'll do it at 3.0 beta. So we'll get the beta version of 3.0. All right, now to create some state, we're gonna use use observable from legend of state. And observable is the kind of core unit of state inside of legend of state. And now let's use that use observable to create a name object that has a first and last name in it. And now let's make those editable by adding input fields to them. So bring an input. All right, now we've created two input fields. These are just like normal inputs in this case. We're gonna give it the value in each case where we get the value of name and then first within that for the first one, and then on change, we just go and set that value using dot set. So it's pretty easy. All right, so we do the same thing for the last field. Now let's go over to our page and bring that in. What we'll a link to slash basics. And now let's try it out. All right, there we go. And as we type, nothing's happening. So what we're missing is we're missing wrapping this basics function in an observer. So let's bring in observer. And that'll export as default and observer around basics. Let's give it a try now. And that works just fine. Awesome. So why do you need to wrap it in an observer? Well, observer is the mechanism that Legend State uses to force that component to refresh only when it thinks it needs to refresh. So it's handling all of the mechanics of all the observing and making sure that that component only re-renders when it absolutely has to re-render. So it's tracking the usage of first and last to make sure that if those ever change, then the component re-renders. Now let me show you how to do computed fields. It's actually like super easy. So here we'll create a full name and then you just give it a function. And that function says, hey, go get the name first and name last and put those in there and then join them together and you get the full name. All right, let's try that out. We'll drop that down there in a div. And how cool is that? That is super easy. Let's go take a look at that code. So right at the top, we have that use observable that creates an observable with these data in it, in this case, first and last, and then the computed for full, awesome. And then the input fields that allow you to change that. But we can actually make those input fields even easier. Let's go and create a new component. I'll call it input. And this is going to be a reactive input. So I'm going to bring in reactive from legend app state, but also inside of that, just the react functionality. And then I'll bring in the shad CN input and then I'll wrap that shad CN input with reactive and create a new input from it. And we'll override on change so that when we get an on change, we'll go and return that new value. And that will tell legend state to go and set the value. All right, let's hit save, and then let's bring that into our page. So we're gonna instead bring input in from just components input. And then down here, instead of value and on change, we use dollar value with the field that we want, and it handles putting in the value in the on change. It's just that simple. Let's go take a look. And now when I type in, awesome. Super easy, right? Well, you know it's also super easy working with the sponsor of this week's video, Infinite Red. Infinite Red's a world-class React Native consultancy that's helped big and small companies ship great native apps. Zoom, Domino's, Blue Jeans, Mercari, Infinite Red has helped them all build their native apps. They've been in the React Native game from the start and they are experts at it. They're also just great people and personal friends of mine. In fact, it was Jammin, one of the principals at IR, who told me I should have another look at Legend State because he was using it on some of his projects. They're really just into that kind of cutting edge stuff and it is supporting the community and supporting creators like me so I can bring you this kind of advanced content. So if you're working on a React Native app and you could use some high quality help, Infinite Red are exactly the folks that you're looking for. All right, now we've seen some of the basics of Legend State. Let's now try out this local first sync stuff by connecting it to React Query. So if I take a look over my app in the API directory, I've got this API profile and a route there. There's a get that gets the current profile and then a post that allows me to update that profile. Now, what does the profile look like? Well, if I go over here, profile JSON, 
we can see that it's got a name, an email, a phone, and an address. So we're going to want to go create a form that goes and gets that data and allows us to edit it. All right, let's start off by creating a new route here. I'm going to call it form immediate. And then within that page.tsx, now this is a React server component. It's going to get the profile for us, and it's going to send that to an editable form that's going to take that profile as its initial data. All right, now let's go create our form. I'm going to call it edit profile. So I'm going to create a client component that takes that profile. And of course, we know that we're going to use legend state. So let's make it an observer. And we'll export that as the default. Now again, I'm going to use use observable. I'm going to create some state by wrapping that profile as an observable. The dollar sign indicates that it is an observable. Now let's bring an input, and then we'll use that to create our form. So this is just like what we saw before. All right, let's go bring our edit profile into our page. And then we'll add a link to that on our homepage. All right, let's try it out. And there you go. Looks pretty good. Of course, it's not actually sending anything back to the server. So now let's connect this to React Query. So to do that, let's go back into our edit profile. And I'm going to bring in a new hook called Use Observable Synced Query. And most importantly, it's from a family of sync plugins one of which connects to TanStack React Query. There's a whole bunch of these sync plugins. It's not just React Query. So you should go on the documentation and see for yourself what's available depending on your scenario. All right, so now let's use this. So now the first thing to do is tell it how to query for the data. And that query signature is exactly what you would get with React Query. You're gonna get a key, you're gonna get a function, as well as the initial data. So let's hit save and see how we go. So if I hit refresh, that still looks good. Let's go into our network tab. And we can see that it actually is accessing profile. So we don't really want it to do that on the start since we already have that data. So we'll add refetch on mount false, and that'll tell React Query to not refetch when this component mounts. Let's give it a try. And there we go. We didn't actually get that request, so that's good. All right, the next thing we need to do is handle mutation. What happens when I actually make a change here, right? So we want to actually send that back to the server. We want to post back to the server and say that we have new data. So to do that, we add a mutation key, and then we give it a mutation function where we fire off a post to API profile, and then we give it the variables, which would be the updated variables. All right, let's give it a go. Now I'm going to go down here and look in the terminal, and we can see as we type that we are sending the data back to the post method. Post method has a console log in it. And if I hit refresh, it's persisted. So it's that easy. I mean, look at this code. It's pretty amazing that this one little hook is doing all of the work of both querying and handling the mutation. And it's all working inside of Next.js really easy. Now, one of the things that I want to make sure that we do before we get into the local for a sync stuff is make sure that we're only sending the fields that we've updated to the server. So I'm going to copy this form immediate and make a new directory called form with deltas. All right, we'll go back into that edit profile. All right, so in this new component, we're going to store the profile coming in. And then down in this mutation, we are only going to send the variables that have been updated between the server state and what we have now. So let's go and create a copy of the profile. To do that, I'm going to use a ref. So let's bring that in. Now down our mutation function, let's go and create a send data object. That send data object is only going to have the keys in it that I've changed between what I had originally on the server and what I have now. So let's go and change the body to send data. That looks good. And the last thing to do is make sure that when we get new data from the server, that we reset that server state. So to do that, I'm going to use a transform. And what transform does is give you callbacks for when it's loading data, like it's getting data back from the server, and when you're saving data so you can process data before you save it out. I'm just going to use load, and we're going to set the server state to whatever we're getting back. All right, let's hit save. Now let's go over to our page and add that. And we'll try that out. All right, let's make some changes. If I, if I just delete that, then let's go back over to our cursor. And we can see that all we sent out was name. So we only changed name and we only sent name. So awesome. Now that in place, we can do some really cool stuff with this offline sync. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the observable persist local storage persist plugin that takes the data we have in the form and persists it in, well, local storage. Now to set that up, all we need to do is go and add another option. 
This would be the persist key where you give it that plugin. You also tell it that we want it to retry after we've come out of offline mode. And then you give it the key for where you want it to set it in local storage. All right, let's give it a go. All right, now before I make a change, I'm going to take us offline. Then I'm gonna make a change locally. And then when I go back online, we can see that it actually makes that change. Really cool. All right, so there we go, we got a John Doe 2. But now, what happens if we got a change on the server? So let's go and change this again, offline. So we got three over there. Now I'll go into cursor, and I'll make a change to the data directly. So I'll add some numbers on here, da, 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 like that, hit save. And now, when I come back online, we've got a fusion of what was on the client with John Doe 3 with what was on the server going back into it. That is so, so cool. All right, now you might be saying to yourself, wow, that actually really is cool and I want it, but I don't want it to go and send out a save on every single keystroke like that. I want it has a submit button. So let's try out a submit button in this scenario. So I'll go back over to our app and I'll create another directory from form with deltas. This one I'm going to call form with submit. And now I'm going to use that user observable to create another observable called form state. So form state is actually what we're going to edit. And then when we submit, we're going to set state to form state. So we'll go down here and we'll change all of our inputs to edit form state. And then we'll keep form state in sync by going back up to our, to our load and then assigning the data coming back into form state to keep it all in sync. All right, so now we've got two observables going and it might be a little bit hard to track what's actually happening here between state and form state. So let's go and display the value of state. So here I'm gonna output the value of state. So now we've got form state and state on the screen, but I'm also gonna wrap that in a memo and that memo component is from legend state and it gives you very fast atomic updating of components. So let's go and add that to our imports. Okay, let's go and add this page. We'll try it out. And there we go, we got a profile down there. And as we can see, as we make changes, this actually doesn't change. So we're not actually changing anything on the server because we haven't set state. And it's this second section in here, which is our connection to the server. So what we wanna do now is create a submit button that sets state to form state. To do that, I'm just gonna bring in button. And then down here, I'm gonna implement down that button. Now our save button is going to assign the state to the current value of form state. And now I get it save. And there we go. We can see that state got updated. And we can see in our console that we only updated that one single value. So now you get that same awesome sync functionality, but you've got that submit button on it. So it makes it very practical. All right, now I want to keep this video short, but I also want to show you how Legend State works within the context of Next.js because Next.js has an interesting relationship with state managers. In particular, you don't want to have a global state manager with either the app router or the pages router. If you want more information on this, I've got an excellent state management walkthrough on my course, pronextjs.dev, where we go through how state managers work on Next.js. So what I've done next is create a final example called form factor that works really well in the context of Next.js because it uses context to pass around the observables. So let me walk you through how that's done. And of course, all of that code will be able to you for free on a link in the description right down below. So let's start off with the page. Now the page that used to have just edit form in it now brings in this profile provider from profile context. Now that profile provider, we give it the profile and then it creates in context some observables that it will then send down to profile form and profile display. Profile form is very simple. It simply uses a hook called use profile that goes and gets those observables from that context as well as an on save function and then connects them to those inputs. Profile display is what we just did with that memo. And again, it uses that use profile to get those observables out of that context. Now, an interesting twist on this display component is because it uses that memo component from legend state, it actually doesn't need to be an observer. So here we're just exporting profile display and using it as a component. And it's memo that actually handles all of the updating from legend state. And then finally, the context is where it really starts to get interesting. But let's start down the bottom. So we create that profile provider. It takes children as well as that profile coming in. And then it uses this use form state hook 
to manage that state. Now that use form state hook is pretty much exactly what we had before, but extracted into a hook. It's got the server state and the form state, just like we have before. It's got the observable synced query, just like we had before. Everything's the same. The only new thing is we create an on save function that gets connected to that button. And then we just return that out. And then we've got a use profile custom hook that goes and uses that context to get those observables and to pass them around. Using context here makes this safe for both the pages router and the app router because on every request, that context gets recycled. If we had it in a global, that means that between each fetch to the server, the state could be reused, which means you get leakage between two requests, which is not great. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Legend State V3 and its new local first functionality. Thank you so much again to my friends over at Infinite Red for your support of this channel. I really appreciate you sponsoring us. In the meantime, of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.